My name is Haru Nakamura. Uh, I'm from Fujitsu representing Five Team MF this time. So, actually, I'm um, another acting chair studying uh, technical committee in Five Team MF. So, my title of the presentation is slightly modified Five Team for 2020 and beyond. Anyway, I think uh, my content is still, like I say, um, contains some some of the original agenda. So, for the next 15 minutes, let me introduce some of these aspects. So this is the outline of my presentation, and uh, well, maybe the expectation, expect, original ex expect, expectation <laughs> was to introduce um, preparations or trials towards um, Tokyo Olympic Games or Paralympic Games to be held in 2020 or something, but uh, I thought most of the trials and uh, uh, efforts towards 2020 would have been you know, presented by my colleagues. Yes, that was the case yesterday and the morning. So uh, in, 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 in my presentation, I will try to provide a very simple uh, exercise to see how, uh, how, the, how can we develop our system in Tokyo or Japan. So it's not an exciting one, but maybe somehow useful to, to see uh, how our deployment would be. So, regarding the five, verbal 5G, I think I don't need to reiterate the same message to you, but uh, from our perspective, the system is uh, bridging uh, our physical world to the, uh, uh, bridging between our physical world and digital world in a secure manner, uh, efficient manner, and very convenient manner. Also, some uh, data processing could be done in our 5G system, or IP network as well. But anyway, uh, based on this understanding, let me start the next topic, background of 5G. Once again, I don't need to go through all of these uh, history in detail. Every ten, uh, 10 years in the end, uh, we have got the new generation in the mobile system, and next generation will be 5G. And also there is a wireless system, as, as has been discussed since the yesterday. and. Uh, Historically, there is a core network stream as well as a radio network stream. And 5G era, these two should be combined in a very uh, unified manner, as well as uh, wireless band. So these are not the same uh, communication system, but from the user perspective, the message here is uh, these are the unified system, cooperate each other. That's my that's our perspective. And if we in, inter uh, introduce a new uh, some message here. So far, I would say our mobile system is a kind of a massive whole sales to, to the users how to provide communication services. Maybe the next next uh, generation uh, on top of these massive whole sales, maybe retail sales, nature would be the important one. So customizing our network services to the each user or each uh, occasion to be, to be used. So, uh, the, uh, having discussed so far, how to realize that kind of things is the question, but maybe we will need further discussions on this aspect, I think. So, this is a picture in our white paper two or three years ago I introduced, and this, this picture represents how the 5G system could provide services to every use cases, and horizontal axis represent quantity. Uh, vertical axis representing quality uh, in terms of latency or QoS or something else. And uh, few, uh, three years ago, we, we said the, there is a variety of services. And in the end, oh, basically, from uh, compared with the 4G, 4G era, such kind of use cases could be expanded to the, the extreme areas of the use case, uh, sorry, for these um, uh, axes. And then, ITR uh, categorizes these use cases in, in three main axes. I don't think uh, I should tell, say something more about this. But uh, um, as some of our colleagues have been already explained, maybe first uh, use case, a main use case could be on enhanced mobile broadband. Then massive machine type communication and URLC would come uh, later. So. Regarding the uh, EMBB scenario, this is a statistics in Japan representing uh, communication traffic, and it increases so uh, rapidly. And I'm not the person to predict the uh, the the when and uh, when and how 
such kind of increasing traffic with this with level. But uh, uh, it is for sure that uh, some fixed wireless communication traffic would be served in our mobile uh, communication systems shortly. And you, you will see a few more uh, new mobile specific traffic uh, on top of that. So maybe the behavior of the traffic is slightly or totally different on these, uh, in these applications. So I'm not sure that's the message. So within a few years, uh, we will see uh, enormous tra traffic. So um, urgent, to uh, urgent issue or challenge is how is to how to handle such kind of uh, enormous increasing communication traffic. And adding to that, uh, for seeing handling, handling of very uh, new mobile specific traffic is the other issue. Maybe it would be uh, caused by uh, massive IoT communications or uh, high reliable communications or something like that. Then, as a case study, uh, what I'm going to explain is uh, how to deploy 5G. And as I said, one of the urgent uh, thing is how to cope with uh, increased uh, demanding communication traffic. And well, technically saying to improve the uh, spec, uh, improve the system capacity, uh, improvement of the spectrum efficiency is the first thing. And for the 5G, you know, Basically, uh, I would say the fundamental factor is the same. So maybe few, uh, five or six health per B, uh, sorry, five or six B, uh, BPS per health is the one thing uh, because of the, uh, as far as uh, moderation technology is concerned. Then the second thing is the utilization of wider frequency spectrum. So there is a challenge to utilize wider spectrum in millimeter way in 5G era. That's the second thing. And the last thing, is a higher spectrum reuse factor in a, in a space wise. So, uh, as some of the previous speakers pointed out, how to deploy smaller cells in our system is the, uh, the the one of the center of this subject, I think. So the question is, how many small cells do you need? And yes, the operators and some uh, players are seriously thinking about such kind of things. So. To see such kind of aspect, well, once again, these charts are have been uh, taken from our white paper in in our previous activity. But anyway, uh, this chart, oh sorry for the small one, but uh, we present our demographics of, of Japan. So uh, your left hand side, each bar represents the population of our local governments. Uh, and area of their each government. And right hand side, this, uh, the, each bar represents the number of local governments which may have such kind of uh, population density. Anyway, this is a profile of Japan. And if I put this one into a XY chart, each dot represents our local uh, government, that is city or town or villages in, in Japan. So most populated uh, city is in Tokyo metropolitan area, and most uh, sparse one is in uh, one in island. And if I add the uh, population density, th this bias dash line represent each population density in each local government. And if I uh, take this one as our vertical chart, our, uh, their profile is looks like this. So this time, horizontal axis represent area of each local government, and uh, Vertical axis represents their uh, population density, and the most density is in Tokyo metropolitan area, and the mo most sparse one is in uh, Fukushima prefecture. So uh, this is our profile in Japan, and if we try to deploy, oh by the way, a uh, few more dots uh, compared with uh, nationwide, uh, some dots are taken from uh, the uh, uh, numbers from U.S., the United States, or. Uh, yes, sorry, this is the one. Uh, Japan and USA, or uh, the most dense populated, uh, I mean, dense populated area in in Hong Kong, is uh, shown in this one. Also, if you think about the stadium scenario, this is one of the example exercises taken from a national stadium. If they have uh, 50,000 people in their stadium, uh, the the density of the, the users would not 
with no practice. So it's a very extreme case. As such, um, these are the cities or towns or villages in my own nation, and we need to deploy uh, serve these uh, local governments or city people in these cities. So uh, this chart represents the 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 what can I say um, daylight population and night time population in each local cities and sorted by their population density either in daylight or night time which is higher and well we try and represent their uh, cumulative uh, area of the pop in the order of the population density so if i remove other uh, lines we try and represent our profile in terms of our population density so in this chart uh, vertical chart represent population density of each local government and uh, if I pick up some points, 10% uh, of our whole population is lived in less than 0.15% of the whole area of Japan and 80% of the population is still living one third of our uh, total area of Japan. So if we serve all of them by deploying small cells well, I can go through all of these uh, small numbers, but I will expect you can check that one in later if necessary. But uh, there is a trade-off between uh, base station distance, intersite distance versus uh, subscribers in a single cell. So if you try to reduce, uh, uh, what can I say, deploy our small cells so as to, so as to the situation that each transmission point or base station cover less than 50 subscribers. Uh, most dense uh, area, the in intersite distance could be less than 30 meters or something, which is nonsense to me. So uh, as such, anyway, uh, this is a cumulative base number of base stations uh, to cover uh, how many uh, percentage of our nations or populations. And it will become more than uh, 300,000 base stations or something to cover up to 10% uh, of our population. So it's a huge number. And how to deploy such kind of things? It, it, uh, I would say it's not the uh, accurate number because still the resolution, resolution of this uh, exercise is not enough to provide the right number. But anyway, I think such kind of number would give us the rough image how to uh, deploy such kind of small cells. And maybe the operator may have a more accurate number, but uh, I'm not the person to discuss such kind of things. So uh, just give you the, the image of the small cell deployment. The other thing is uh, the, uh, dynamics of the demographics. This is, well, once again, sorry for the small numbers, but uh, in Tokyo metropolitan area, every morning we have a commuters up to 700,000 people uh, in the morning and uh, evening. They are committed to their com companies or schools and go back to their home. So uh, most of the extreme cases, daylight population is uh, 17 folded than compared with their nighttime population. So such kind of big population of uh, traffic are going going to and going back to their uh, companies and homes. So such kind of dynamics should be also captured. Then what to do and how? So this is um, something physical one uh, taken from uh, 3GPPTL to, to see what's the probability of line on site. So if you go, go to uh, smaller cells, probability of line on site is becoming bigger. So that's the implication of this chart. And if it is in a rural area, that could be a macro deployment. And if it's a, a less than 100 meter intersite distance or something, it would become a, a, what we call a micro cell deployment. And maybe small cell area, we should think about less than 100 meter to up to uh, one kilometer or something. So this is the uh, line of sight probability. That means your base station would see uh, interference in between each other. So we need control such kind of interference. To do that, 
one of the technical enabler we are working for is uh, ultra high density distributed smart antenna systems. That is uh, basically a beam forming or coordination between these transmission points. But uh, that that is allow you to to manage such kind of interference in a very smart manner and provide a higher capacity to the network. So what I have been talking about is one solution for considering uh, deployment of a small cell to to serve. Uh, uh, can I say higher capacity to the system, but uh, and the next stage we will think about how to how to serve uh, URLC or massive time uh, mass massive machine time communication in a very efficient manner. But maybe we we'll need another enablers to realize such kind of things. So um, basically, uh, the last message in my presentation is uh, this is um, how to deploy uh, radio system five uh, G RAM and LT version, and this is a quite obsolete chart. I think that was in year 2015, but I believe the fundamental message should be still valid. So in 5G phase one, it could be either be a non-standalone type using a sub-6 GHz spectrum, but you can use also a standalone as well. But anyway, the message here is we'll see a, a, a Phase approach in our uh, in our 5G era, but uh, the thing is, we should think about the forward compatibility between the, the phase one development and phase two development. Maybe your device is in first phase one could be still uh, useful in in the second stage. And also, uh, type interlocking with the LT version is the important thing, as has been discussed since the yesterday. So that's the main message here. So I don't, I don't think we should, I should repeat my conclusion in, in, uh, along this line. So let me conclude my presentation. Thanks for your attention.